Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. So, this is just a part 2 of our lesson about strategic and management in hospitality industry. So, if you haven't watched my first video yet, so I will provide the link on the description. On that um, video, I discussed about the different um, definition of hospitality and tourism industry on a different context or on a different perspective. So for today, we will discuss the characteristics of hospitality and tourism organization. So these characteristics involves inseparability or customer participation in the service process, simultaneity, perishability, intangibility, heterogeneity, cost structure and labor intensive so let's talk about it individually let's start first with inseparability so from the name itself parang inseparable so hindi mapaghihiwalay so what is it at sino ba yung dapat na hindi mapaghiwalay so it states here that um, in hospitality and tourism organizations, customers need to be present and participate in the service delivery process. So in other words, hindi lang si employee yung kailangan or si kung sino mang part ng organization yung kailangan na maging present para magawa yung service delivery. But dapat kasama din si customer. Where um in line with that, hospitality organizations are expected to communicate with and encourage customers to actively participate in the service delivery process. Attracting and bringing customers to hospitality and tourism organizations entail careful attention to their location, brand image, and ongoing marketing and promotional activities. So also, the presence of customers and uh, the requirement for them to play an active role in the service delivery process necessitates ongoing careful attention to their behavior behavior, di ba? Siyempre, hindi naman um, unang-una, hindi naman mangyayari yung hindi makakomplete. Parang communication lang, dapat two-way siya. So, in service, ganun din. Dapat two-way din. So, hindi naman makakomplete yung isang service kung hindi naman magpa-participate or hindi naman ito may experience ni customer. So, therefore, anong uh, kailangan okay, para mag-participate si customer? Of course, dapat may careful attention kayo to the behavior to your employees itself, to their physical appearance, to the interior design and the decoration of your facilities. Kung halimbawa, ano kayo? Kung amusement park, di ba? Maayos ba? Organized ba lahat? Maayos ba yung proseso? May tamang sistema ba? In hotels, ganun din. In the furnishings, di ba? Lalo na kung sa mga hotels. Layout and even the noise, di ba? So, yun. So, therefore, um, um, uh, this is related with what fits Simon's assess on 2004, they comment on managing service organization, operation, marketing, and HRM functions in hospitality and tourism. So, sabi niya, this part of the company needs to be closely integrated. So, yun. So, again, in inseparability, hindi, uh, kailangan mag-participate si customer on the service delivery process. And, anong part ni uh, service or any business to on. So, kailangan nilang magbigay, di ba, ng good quality service para mag-participate si customer in that service delivery process. Okay, that's the first one. Next, how about simultaneity? So, in order to make sure that services are produced and offered to customer at an expected quality that meets consistent standards, hospitality and tourism organizations should rely on other measures such as investing in human resources, use of technology, building desired facilities, and decoration to ensure the quality of service desired. So, alam naman natin no, that the services in hospitality and tourism organizations are created and consumed simultaneously. Okay, sabay-sabay. Um, this can prevent employing active control, uh, quality control mechanism. So, as earlier noted, customers and employees need to participate, diba? So, and mag-coordinate sila in the service delivery process. So, and the uh, Medyo imposible for a manager, for every employee to monitor, di ba? Parang ang dami yung employees, tas isa ka lang na manager. It is impossible to monitor the service delivery process. So, anong pwedeng gawin? So, they can invest on the different uh, technologies, ayan, that could um, help them in... Um, 
managing the people uh, below them. So, for example, di ba yung mga task management tools that we have discussed in the applied business tools and technologies? So, yun. So, yung mga diniscuss natin. So, they can invest in that para uh, kahit pa paano, kung ikaw si manager, makikita mo na lang or ma-automate nyo na yung mga um, updates on the tasks. So, yun. So, monitor mo sila kahit hindi mo sila nakikita ng physically. So, yun. So, what else? So, you should invest in human resources also. So, for example, um, mag-hire pa ng mas maraming tao, i-train yung mga tao, um, i- Um, improve yung physical facilities, decoration, and other things na kailangan para makapag-provide ng good quality service. Next, with perishability. So, in perishability, so from the name perishable, diba? as production and consumption in hospitality and tourism organization are simultaneous, madalas yung service becomes perishable. Okay? So, paano to, ma'am? Akala ko goods lang yung nagiging napaperish or parang nabubulok na sa sayang. Pero, service din pala ay ganun. So, as a result, their value is lost forever. For example, halimbawa, airline seat. Kung hindi yun nauupuan, walang nagbubuk sa inyo. For example, a hotel room, di ba, nagdi-diminish or nagdi-depreciate yung value niyan. So, if it's not purchased on the time of the production or kung kailan available tong service na to, hindi na-utilize, di ba? So, it can be perishable. So, the utilization of service capacity is a strategic task for many hospitality and tourism organizations. It is, however, important to emphasize that demand for hospitality and tourism organization services often fluctuates considerably depending on the external developments and changes such as seasonality and crisis. So, di ba? Halimbawa, pagka holiday, ganyan. So, yun, uh, expected mo naman na talagang maraming magbubook on your either hotel or kung ano man yung industry ninyo or business nyo. Pero kung halimbawa, nawala na yung season na yun, so back to work na yung mga tao, um, halimbawa, umuulan, ganyan, so hindi masyado nakaka-travel yung mga tao, ganyan, so yun. So, it can lead to um, the delay or para hindi ma-purchase or mag-purish yung inyong service na in-offer. What else? For example, yung pandemic, di ba? So, dati, sobrang tinamaan, di ba, yung tourism business natin or tourism industry natin. Bakit? Kasi, um, di ba, sinara yung airport natin, so we cannot um, get tourists. So, wala naman masyado ding nagtatravel dahil nga sa virus. So, with that, di ba, we can say that the, the services that are being offered on that time was uh, or perished Why? Because it didn't consume or we didn't consume it right away. So, yun. So, that is perishability. And one of the characteristics, again, of um, hospitality and tourism organization. Next is tangibility. So, tangible. So, yun. So, hospitality and tourism organizations offer a combination of tangible and intangible products. So, for example, a hotel room or a meal in a restaurant has both tangible and intangible qualities. So, pero may, merong major difference, di ba, between a budget hotel or a luxury hotel or between a fast food or yung mga medyo luxurious restaurant na in terms of their tangible and intangible qualities that they are offering. So, second is, for example, some of the services are often ideas. So, hindi lang yung kung ano man yung na-experience mo, yung accommodation, hindi lang siya ganon. So, minsan ito ay idea din, concept, interaction, di ba, sa mga amusement parks, ganyan, relationships, and experiences that are not often patentable. So, hindi siya na-apply or wala siyang registration, wala siyang license kasi it's unique for the different persons na kinikater ninyo. So, it is essential to note that the intangible aspect of services offered by hospitality and tourism organizations, these are very critical in customer satisfaction. Okay? So, that is why we have to um, remember and we have to take note that Hospitality and tourism organizations are offering, okay, either tangible and intangible services or products for their 
um, customers. Next characteristic is heterogeneity. So, from the word hetero. So, hospitality services can be heterogeneous. Ibig sabihin, iba-iba. There are different variations in service delivery from customer to customer and from time to time, it will always occur. So, aspect of total service delivery process, so employee to customer interaction, customer to customer interaction, and internal and external factors. So, for example, um, Although meron tayong sistema, for example, oh, for example, nagbook si ganito, pumunta siya sa, nagbook siya by, um, ang check-in niya ay, for example, 2pm, ganyan, and then may sistema tayo. So, pupunta siya sa receptionist, tapos kayo, ibibigay natin yung card sa kanya la, and then hatid natin sila sa kanya ng hotel, etc., etc. So, meron tayong system na ganun. Meron naman talaga, pero... We cannot standardize the employee to customer interaction. Because there are some customers, iba iba yung customers. Eh. So there are some customers na medyo yung parang masungit, ganyan, o wala sa mood makipag-usap. There are some customers naman na madaldal. So, maraming tinatanong. There are some customers na friendly. There are some customers, for example, na mahilig sa pet. For example, may dala siyang pet. So, iba yung interaction ng employee nyo doon. So, yun. So, hindi pwedeng, o, oh, eto lang yung sasabihin nyo, eto yung script nyo. Although, minsan may mga ganon yung mga employees. Lalo na sa reception. Pero, again, hindi may standardize kailanman yung employee to customer interaction kasi iba-iba ang bawat employee or end ba ang bawat customer therefore um this is one of the challenge in the hospitality industry and at the same time pwede ring maging um challenge and um kumbaga parang maging room for growth ng mga employee di ba na kahit pa paano, nakakapag-adjust sila on how they deal with people. So, yun. So, that is heterogeneity. Next one is, di ba, um, uh, to add into this, no? So, di ba, halimbawa, may makikita ka ng mga reviews wherein yung, um, halimbawa, ang review doon sa hotel is, ay, ang rude ng mga staff. Ganyan. Kasi iba yung interaction nila, di ba? Iba yung service. Kahit naman napakaganda ng hotel, pero rude pala yung staff. They found it rude. Um, what else? For example naman, customer to customer. Hindi naman na natin mapipigilan yun kasi we cannot choose our customer naman, di ba? So, yun. So, um, nalimbawa, naging rude yung isang customer to another customer. So, what will happen? So, ano siya, um, it can lead to parang magkaroon ng bad image on your uh, business kahit na wala ka naman talagang control. And other, internal and external factors. Next is cost structure. So, the cost structure of the hospitality and tourism industries um, influence their managerial and resource allocation decision. So, we have to um, remember, alam naman natin, no, before you can create or be before you can have, for example, a hotel, o kaya naman, travel agency, o kaya naman, um, whatever na basa hospitality and tourism uh, business, medyo malaki talaga yung capital na kailangan. Okay, malaki. There is a big cost structure. Iba pa yan kapag yung mga luxury hotels pa. So, sa mga luxury hotels, they have a, they are capital, labor, and energy intensive. So, they have high property costs and most likely, di ba, mas marami silang empleyado kasi medyo luxurious yung ano nila, yung ino-offer nila. So, it may be difficult for them to reduce some cost items, di ba, kahit na hindi masyadong in-demand yung service na pinaprovide nila or kahit na kaunti lang yung nagbubook, for example, sa mga hotels. So, also, um, they also need to renovate their area, di ba? Kasi para maging competitive. For example, kung halimbawa si Hotel A, nag-offer na siya ng room na may aquarium. So, yun. So, yung makikita mo yung mga fish, mga ganyan, sa ah, habang nakahiga ka sa bed mo, di ba? Kung may nag-offer na ng ganun, Tapos, luxurious hotel ka din. So, you have to renovate yours din, di ba? Mag-provide ka rin ng ganong um, uh, parang feature on your hotel para maging competitive ka in the environment. So, um, ang major issue dito, of course, syempre, yung vast amount ng investment that you make, that you need to have or you need to make para makapag... Um, para maka-attract ka ng mga customers as well as possible investors and uh, investors on your 
uh, business. As a result, the companies need to maintain a steady flow of customers. So, this is one of the challenge. Dapat palaging may nagbubuk pa din in order to maintain the profitability of their business. So, this often leads to creative marketing, ayan, product development strategies, mga pricing strategies, such as weekend rates, ganyan, um, Kapag matagal kayo nag-stay dito, so mas mababa, may discount, and group lodge discount. So, pag marami kayo, yan, mas ma, ano kayo, mas matagal or mas ma laki yung discount ninyo. Next characteristics of hospitality and tourism organization, of course, is labor-intensive. So, hospitality and tourism organizations are labor-intensive. This is because personal interaction and experiences are important parts of services and employees. And they play a key role in this process. So, when we say labor-intensive, kailangan ng maraming, um, it could be employees. So, mag exhaust ka ng maraming human power. Uh, bakit? Kahit na gumagamit tayo ng machines, computers, and other technological developments, di ba? So, hindi pa rin mapapantayan yung... Um, Uh, human interaction, lalo na kung service yung pinaprovide nyo. Siyempre, being served and treated nicely by the employees is a major factor in getting um, customers over and over again. So, yun, yung iba ka, minsan, di naman talaga masyadong maganda yung facilities, pero dahil sobrang accommodating ng staff, makakapagpahinga ka naman ng maayos doon sa facilities nila. Compared to some, um, halimbawa, hotel na or inn na Um, maganda nga sa kanila, mas maganda nga pero rude naman yung staff, diba? So, babalik sila dito sa isa. Pero again, um, uh, it, the characteristic itself is labor intensive. So, kailangan pa din ng tao, kailangan ng personal interaction and experiences ng mga customers ninyo. We're done with the different characteristics of hospitality and tourism organization. So, let us now proceed. Ano bang role ng strategic management sa mga ganitong industry? So, nakita na natin how broad it is, di ba? How, uh, how lots of businesses are under it, under the hospitality and tourism industry. So, paano naman dapat mag-strategize or bakit naman kailangan ng strategic management dito? So, according to Nikel noong 2005, product design, market segmentation, franchising, real estate investment trusts, And new product concepts are some of the strategic driving forces that cause the industry or the hospitality and tourism industry to be very dynamic. So, ito mga trend na to and developments, it require the organization. These require the organization in the hospitality and tourism industry to keep redefining their strategic management pra practices through a continuous process. So, for example, the hospitality and tourism industry have been experiencing dramatic changes in customer expectations and needs. Hindi na lang nila kailangang mag-develop ng new products and services, di ba? Although, kailangan nila yun on an ongoing basis, but they also need to control their cost and manage the, their human resources wisely. So, according to Pine and Gilmore noong 1998, services in the hospitality and tourism industry are undergoing a shift Okay, from service to experience. So, dati, ano lang, um, okay, o, oh, kailangan nyo ng matutulugan, o, oh, dito kayo. So, yun, so, service lang, so, we will provide you accommodation. Ngayon, pati experience kasama na. So, they want, the customer wants to have a good experience. Kaya nga, nagsisulat tayo ng reviews, di ba? So, they want to have a good experience. Aside from, binigyan mo na sila ng servisyo, pinatulog mo na sila, Ano pa yung experience nila? Okay, uh, is it a good or bad experience ba? Babalik ba sila or hindi? Okay, so if you will see some hospitality businesses such as uh, hotels, Disney World, um, and other um, um, and other organizations or businesses, they refer to their respective services as experience. That this requires uh, changing the mindset of their managers as well as their employees na magkaroon ng strategic thinking, gumawa ng uh, different strategies on their daily operations kung paano sila makakapag-provide ng good experience sa kanilang mga customers. So, in order to achieve this shift, there is an essential need to know both the hospitality and the strategic context and how this uh, strategic change can be achieved in 
that context. Okay, so that is why, sabi nga nila, strategic management deals with the major and fundamental managerial issues that directly affect the future of hospitality and tourism organizations. So, uh, as a uh, part of the hospitality and tourism business, kailangan yung mga owners as, as well as the managers and the employees. They should think how they would provide a great experience for their um, customers. Okay, so that is all for the strategic management in hospitality industry. So, um, I hope that you're able to learn a lot from this lesson. And if you haven't subscribed yet, so please don't forget to like this video, subscribe on this channel, and share this video to other students who might be needing this um, video or this uh, type of lesson about strategic management in hospitality industry. Thank you! See you on my future videos!